live from Mackey Arena. It's Katie Court. I don't know. If it, it'll be a day when it may be named after Matt Painter, but I don't know where they're going to put it. Is it maybe in the three-point line? Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> At the way you shot it back then, it would have been perfect. But this is Golden Black Live, in case you are tuning in. And this is uh, co the coach's favorite 20 minutes of his, of, his, of his season. I can promise you we do appreciate the fact that he takes time to come on with us and Chris Foreman's efforts to know Joe Easterman will, will join us in segment two. And then Brian and Matt will break down Purdue and Illinois, a big game tomorrow in Champaign. Uh, I'll ask you a football question just because you're a, you're a study of you study sports and uh, team dynamics, but uh, Jeff Brom's team is starting to catch momentum, but Illinois is going to might be, I, I know you haven't spent a lot of time breaking down the fighting line of a football team, but <laughs> they might, uh, it's a tough, it may be an interesting game to win. Well, I think, uh, you know, both teams, you know, when you get this part of the season, you kind of get midway, what direction are you going? I yeah. think Purdue's going in a great direction. Um, you know, you're always going to have some remorse when you lose some games early in the season that you felt like you should have won. Yeah. But if you can learn from those games, um, obviously with the schedule as you kind of get pushing here past, they have some pretty quality opponents. Um, it doesn't mean you can't beat those opponents, yeah. but when you get into these situations, um, you know, when you go to Nebraska, you know, that, that builds a lot of confidence. It just does. Yeah. Obviously, you beat a ranked team in Boston College, but when you go on the road, I don't care who you play in conference, when you win, that gives you a lot of confidence. And so now going to Illinois, already having a road win, you know, I, I think it's really going to help them. And hopefully we can get back to three and three and three. And now we're right back into, you want to make that next step. You know, yeah. they, they made a huge step last year. And that's, that's part of making a huge step in your first year like they did is now you want to build off of that. You know, and, and people sometimes can judge, you know, wins, whether you have eight wins or six wins or nine wins or, and they just say, well, you know, you, you took a step back or whatever. And that's not always the case. You know, obviously you get judged by the end of the season. So, you know, we got a great football coach. We got a great staff. You know, I've, I've been going to football games forever <laughs> at Purdue. And uh, there's only one person that's made me stand up every time he touches the ball. And uh, yeah. it's just a natural feeling. Like whenever Randall Moore gets the, the ball, like, you know, before I try to look around some people, if I saw it, great. If I didn't, I go to the board, I look up on the board. But when he gets it, I'm going to stand up, I'm going to watch because, you know, he can make it happen anytime he touches it. So, you know, I, I think they're going to keep adding guys like that. Yeah. They're going to keep building. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been really impressed with what they've done. And, you know, hopefully we can get to three and three with the win versus Illinois on Saturday. I could see him actually taking off from the uh, free throw and dunking the basketball. He's, I mean, he's a Rondale. He's just, uh, he's a talent. I don't know. I don't know if he's ever right. played. My guess is he doesn't, hasn't played a lot of basketball, but uh, talented athlete. Brian, I'll let you ask a real question. There are probably people who would say the same thing about Carson Edwards, that mm -hmm. he's one of those guys where, I don't know if it's polite to stand up in front of the people who are yeah. sitting behind you, but people might say he's that sort of guy who's so captivating, catches right. your attention every time he's got the ball. Yeah. And he's capable of, you know, shooting from all over the place. No question. And stuff. What's he capable of, I guess, this year? You know, you know, Pat Chambers last year, obviously being yeah. the Penn State head coach, called yeah. him the Saquon Barkley of college basketball. And oh, I thought, that's yeah. where you got that, huh? That's where I stole that from. I got yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, most it. good things were stolen. <laughs> and yeah. so, um, but no, he, he's definitely that way. You know, Carson's some somebody that, really gets up for games. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he's a guy that, you know, when he has the basketball in his hands, very similar to Rondell Moore, it's just like, you know, you, you know something's gonna happen. Right. And, uh, but just very, very talented, very efficient. Um, even with that kind of speed and athleticism and explosion, that doesn't make the ball go in. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got a high skill level. You know, he's, he's one of the best shooters in the country, if not the best shooter in the country. Um, and so with all those, variables to have as a basketball player already being an All-American in one year, you know, I'm like everybody else, you know, we're, we're excited to see what he's going to do in his junior season. Yeah. Going back 14 years and when, when you had to make the transition here and, and again looking at kind of the big picture of how you build programs and how you build teams, Jeff Brahms had to do that in football, but you know, you go back, what did you learn going back to that time? You know, now that you take away that you use every day, having to go through a year with right. guys with great effort, you couldn't get the results you, you wanted, but you had guys that set the table. What did that teach you, you know, as, yeah. and what do you use now with that? Well, I think the thing that they'll use is the same thing that, we'll use, that, that we used at that time is, you know, we've had a lot of change here, especially from a facility standpoint. Yeah. We've had a lot of improvements, <laughs> but you could argue the, the greatest class that we had, we had when our facilities were poor. Yeah. You know, and so, but what you have right now is something special, and Jeff Brom has it, and it's special, and it's called opportunity. Yeah. So in recruiting, you know, you want a couple things. You want to have hope. Yeah. 
You know, guys, guys like Rondell Moore, you know, the quarterback play, you know, that gives you hope. You know, our defense last year was great. Everybody was worried, but our defense was great. Obviously, Juwan Bentley was a great player, but, you know, so you want that hope, but you want opportunity. Yeah. And opportunity is so important in recruiting. So those guys are going out and selling that. And you can see that with their recruiting efforts and everything, and that's what you want to be able to do. But you can't have it with the class. You know, you have to have it with those multiple classes. So you go back to back years, and then you get into that third year, and now you get three quality classes in a row. That's how you build, because football's different. You know, you have to get those guys in their third, fourth, fifth year that are ready to roll and ready to play and be good together. Yeah. Just to go back to my question about Carson earlier, I don't know if you've ever necessarily built a team around a singular guard. Is that different? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you guys have had a lot of great big men over the years. You've had really good right. guards too, but they've always had a big man with them. Right. Is it is it different building around Carson than it's been maybe in your frame of reference at Purdue? Um, I think what's different for him is that he's been able to score the basketball and, and play off of more people. We didn't run a, a right. ton of stuff for him. Like now, as the, as the season went on, we ran more stuff for him. Yeah. He was more, you know, he, he got where he was more productive. You could argue going into the season, you know, he didn't start at the end of his freshman year. Yeah. So you right. go into that next season, like, you know, he's trying to establish himself. He's, he's trying to start too. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he had a great um, improvement from one year to the other, not necessarily from a physical sense, but more of an understanding, you know, how can he play? How can he fit into a team? Right. Now it kind of works where, you know, you know about him. He's a guy that's a high volume shooter. So he's, he's still gonna take a lot of shots. Um, and I think kind of less is more. I think when you have a guy like him, like a, like a Glenn Robinson that's going to shoot, you know, 20 times a game. You know, Carson averages around 16 shots per game going into this year. I would think that he averages around 20 shots a game. You know, you've got to have the right pieces with him. You've got to have the right skill with him. You know, he needs space to play. And if you put a lot of people out there that can't shoot, you know, that, that really crowds things up and makes it harder. So, you know, we're going to have some guys on the court you know, that are going to have to be able to knock down some threes right. and just to keep everybody honest. I think Matt Harms is going to have a great year. I think Ryan Klein will have a great year. You know, Nogel Eastern will have an expanded role. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that could, you know, those guys, I always look at the guys that have that experience coming off the bench and playing before they want their roles to expand. Right. Well, now they're going to expand. And I, and I definitely think those guys are capable of having great years. Leadership is about it, is everything, and you've been through this obviously at Purdue with having big senior classes or classes of, of recruits. That, you know, obviously Juwan and Robbie and Etwan didn't all leave at the same time. But talk about the void that the, that the four seniors from last year leave, and what dynamic? What are you seeing in your guys in terms of that? I mean, not just right. leadership, but what that can create again that word you used earlier, opportunity. That's yes. what, you, what you want to look for, but yeah. what are you seeing early on? Yeah, well, those four guys were great, but, you know, they grew in yeah. to being the kind of the, the group that they were, the leadership that they had, the understanding. We, we had a high basketball IQ, yeah. and so when you take the assist turnover ratios of Matthias and P.J. Thompson and Vince Edwards to go with, the you know, just the uniqueness of Isaac Haas, um, Carson Edwards was perfect, mm -hmm. you know, and so now as you're shaping your team, now, you know, you, you have to lead by example when you're one of the, you know, top guys or people that play a lot. And so, you know, I, I feel like Klein, um, Grady Eifert, I think Grady's going to play a great role for us um, this year. And I think that's the one thing that when you talk about roles, I think that was something 10, 15, 20 years ago, you know, it wasn't talked about as much. And like it's, you know, take pride in being great in your role. I think PJ said that once last year. He goes, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to be great in my role. And that's not you know, that's not a put down to anybody. Yeah. You know, there's, there's, there's guys making $10 million in the NBA that are role players. And uh, that was unheard of 30 yeah. years ago. And so I think kids are starting to look at that and say, you know, how can I find my way? How can I find my niche? But also as a coach, you know, you're trying to get those guys to understand, like, here's what you have to do to help us get to the magic level. And everybody can't play shortstop and lead off. You know, obviously, you know, if this was a baseball team, Carson Edwards would play, be yeah. playing short and leading off. And uh, we were trying to find, you know, different places to get him in the lineup yeah. to help Purdue. And so I, I think there's a lot of things that go on with defining roles um, for our team. And I think with that, you know, when guys accept that, that helps in leadership. Yeah, it, it just does. Sense. It just helps in leadership because now people are accepting of their roles they're going to play. And there's nothing wrong with that because at the end of the day, the only thing that really matters is, you know, if we win. You know, let's win games, let's be together, um, but also don't try to be somebody else. I think once, you know, I don't, I think our class last year was great. I don't think you replace greatness. 
I think you have to be yourself um, and do the best that you can. And it's like Carson Edwards, like you're, we're never going to have a player like him at Purdue. Yeah. You know, you're never going to have a player like each one more ever again at Purdue. He was a slow moving. He just got things done. He was <laughs> calm. We're not going to have someone like that. I still haven't found the next Robbie Hummel. Yeah. I still haven't found somebody like Jawan Johnson. You know, we, we can honestly say we're never going to find Isaac Haas again. So, like, when you look at and, and you look at all the great players that play at Purdue, if you can accept some of those things and not try to have like you're selling a house and trying to find a comp, you know, just go find quality. Just try to get you know their best value out of them. And I think when you do that, it really helps with your team chemistry and it helps with your leadership. Yeah. I think probably you're going to miss experience defensively, but you have to like your physical gifts. Can this be a more a higher pressure defense? Um, we'll see. Is it, that what you, it depends you on their di- it depends on their discipline. Well, you know, yeah. you it's a, I got to I got to kind of be you know, figure it out as you go along. Like, you know, uh-huh. yeah, you would like that to happen, right. but if it doesn't, it doesn't mean that we can't be efficient. I think No Gel Eastern can really help us. Klein's a great team defensive guy. I don't think there's anybody that thinks that Matt Harms isn't going to improve our defense for the last three or four yeah. years at that slot, <laughs> yeah. you know? And so I think he can really help us, um, you know, in those areas. Now the other guys, it's going to be interesting, you know, because I haven't, I just haven't seen them versus other people yet. You know, how do they fit in there? I know I talked about four guys, but all those four guys I've seen play in, in major games before. So, right. you know, I, I feel like all four of those guys, uh, obviously I didn't mention Carson, but including Carson, you know, can be really good defensive players for us in their own right, in, in, in their own way. Is there something to it, to, I, one thing you guys, maybe haven't done as much as you used to the last couple of years. And obviously it, it, it's come with a trade-off, but there, you haven't forced right. a lot of turnovers. Correct. And the way this team is built athletically, speed-wise, quickness, right. is that a best-case scenario where you can put together a defense that would force more turnovers, yeah. get in the open floor a little bit more? You know, I, I think in theory it makes sense, yeah. but you know, we'll see. We, we don't want it to do it um, in the expense of us now letting the ball get in the paint more, let guys get layups more, you know, fouling guys more because rebounding. we're trying to get more steals, rebounding. And so, like, when you get into that picture with, with guys, like, and you said it perfectly on, on the trade off, that's what we traded. You know, we had traded assist turnover ratio, we, we traded basketball IQ for a little bit of lateral quickness. And, you know, Dakota Mathias was probably the main cog in that wheel in terms of when we recruited him, like, saying, like, you know, this might be a guy we have to hide, but offensively, man, he's really going to help us. And then he, he kind of shows you what determination and hard work um, can lead to. He became one of the best defenders, not only in the Big Ten, but in the country. So, you know, I, I think everybody, if they put their mind to it, um, can be able to defend. We, we definitely want to go up and get the basketball like we always have and put pressure on the basketball. Uh, we'll see. I think it comes to dribble containment. You know, you know. I, a lot of people look at dribble containment. Sure, you have to move laterally, but you have to have discipline. You have to understand angles. You have to, you know, you have to be a willing participant, for lack of a better word. Like some guys, you know, when they go into games, like they're not thinking about containing the dribble. You know, they're they're, they're thinking about hitting right. pull up threes. Right. And so you got to get their mind on those type of things, um, and do a lot of little things, and then the other stuff takes care of itself. Now, Rob Hummel paid you a. And I know you didn't send him a check before, but it paid you a big compliment at an event I was at last night in Indianapolis, talking about Matt Painter being a guy, you know, after after he's gone, he cares about his guys, he cares about me, and Rob's an, maybe an easy guy to care about. But <laughs> and you, but yet you are not uh, somebody that likes to talk about yourself or talk about what, at least the Matt Painter I think I know, doesn't want it, not a guy that's going to brag about those types of things. But how much has that changed in recruiting? And as you go uh, talk to guys and say, you know, we're going to find a way not, you know, to take, make sure that not only you have a good experience at Purdue, but you'll mean something to us for the rest right. of my life. How do you, how do you articulate that message to, to kids and to families yeah. as you go in? Well, I, I just try to talk about my experience as a player at Purdue and how Purdue wasn't done with me after I was done playing. Yeah. I think that's a, it's a good story to tell. Um, you know, I value the relationship, you know, that I have with my college coach, with Coach KD, and, you know, and I, I tell him, like, more than anything, like, you know, we're friends. And I, you don't look at your coach that way a lot of times, but as life goes on, you know, I'm not 19 years old anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and so when, when that happens and you have that kind of relationship, and I talk about it and just having a basketball family, I go, it's not a recruiting pitch. Yeah. And uh, the one thing he left in his office was um, all the people that had, had either graduated 
guys that left early aren't on this board. So, you know, anybody who left early, Russell Cross isn't on the yeah. board. Glenn Robinson isn't on the board. Um, Caleb Swanigan's not on the board. So if you left early, you're not on this board, but you go back, you know, a long time. You know, you go That's back 38 years um, between Coach Katie and myself, and we talk about a lot of the players that played here that didn't make the NBA. And so it's not about having a, just a great college career. Sure, you want to have a great college career. It's about getting an opportunity, getting a scholarship, and then letting Purdue work for you and having a great life. You know, you're going to be a former player for 40 to 50 years. Yeah. You know, you're a player for a real short amount of time. So just trying to sell that in recruiting and get guys to understand that we play a fun style of play. But our education is, you know, is great here. The people are great here. And just kind of talk about all of our experiences. Obviously, it helps, like with Coach Brantley. Yeah. You know, he, he has his experiences different than mine. You know, he goes and plays 12 years, you know, overseas. He comes back here as an assistant. So we have a lot of different stories that we tell about a lot of different guys. And that's what we really try to push in the recruiting just the transparency um, of our experiences and how we can help them not just you know be a good player, but also help them going past basketball. And hopefully it's past professional basketball. That, that, that's the goal. I think the one thing that gets lost is like young kids think making it is getting to the NBA. We've seen a lot of guys you know get to the NBA and not have quality lives after the NBA. You know, there's a lot of those stories. And so making it in life is you know how you treat people. Yeah. Making it in life is getting the most out of your ability. Making it in life is influencing other people. You know, I say that about a player. I said the, the true test of a player is how good you make other players. Yeah. You know, and so like you start to have your own family and you do things and you know, what do you do for humanity? What do you do in your community? You know, all these things that matter, you're making a difference. You know, and if you just got a couple all conference plaques, then you know. You know, who cares? Yeah. You know, the world doesn't care if you can make a pull-up jump shot. Yeah. That's a lot of big picture stuff. And yes. Teenagers All my seem to live in the moment. Pictures, yeah. yes. Is there a <laughs> challenge to Sorry. get them to think that way when they might be sure. uh, you, focused you're, on you're what's still directly in front of them? You're still discussing what's directly in front of them. And, and so <laughs> it, on a daily basis. On a daily basis. Okay. And so you're tr still trying to get them to understand right. that but th this is theirs you know what i mean like you know i made the decision that i made and it was great you know i, I don't have any you know you know, i think sometimes in life you get buyer's remorse when you, you get a house you get a car you make a college decision and you know for me like i don't have any buyer's remorse i average four points in college <laughs> and so like i look back and like man i should have done better but it's not anybody else's fault besides myself and a little bit of it gets capped because of the people that you go against and the talent you go against. But I like the place that I am because of what Purdue has done for me. I, I owe a lot to Purdue. I owe a lot to Coach Katie. So just trying to sell that and uh, kind of bring things full circle. It definitely helps us when that message is being sent and that mom and dad is sitting, sitting there because they've experienced it. They've experienced their own life. You go through the trials and tribulations. And, you know, for every job that I've ever had, either Purdue hired me or Purdue helped me get it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, to me, that makes me feel like obviously I, I made the right decision. And, but it's not the it's it's not the always the, the best decision for everybody. You know, right. sometimes guys they they have to play. And if like you come into here, and you know you got Isaac Haas and you got AJ Hammonds and you got Caleb Swanigan, mm -hmm. and and you're up four or five, you know, and you say, hey, I want to start right away and play 30 minutes, and all these guys are returning, you're probably not going to get in there. It's going to take you a little bit, so it's not the right time for you. So there's a lot of timing types things that um, I, I think are really important in recruiting, and sometimes guys don't see some of those things. You can't be scared of competition, um, but you also got to be able to understand where you fit and who you are and really what's your happiness. I think that comes out a lot in recruiting when I talk to guys is like going, you know your own happiness. Don't, don't make a decision so it sounds good. Make a decision so it's good for you, it's good in your heart, and now you can go forward knowing this is the best place for you. You mean fans and, and people like us don't know everything that goes on in recruiting? <laughs> I, I can't believe it. All right, happy coach equals happy life. You've had a couple of life things that have gone on here, big things. And, a contract extension this morning, uh, a recent marriage to Sherry, who I've met once or twice, lovely person. I know that you're a private person, but tell me what that what that means for, for Matt Painter, besides yeah. a, a life's happiness quotient right. goes up, I suppose, but right. uh, it's part of part of living this life. No, it was great. We got married last weekend, yeah. and so had a, had a great time uh, out at the hangar, but uh, no, Sherry's great. She's wonderful, and um, you know, we've had some great experiences together, like traveling. She flies for yeah. Um, a living and so like um, you know the past five six years we've um, you know spent a lot of time together and grew we just both felt like it was the right time um, you know to tie the knot and I think um, 
you talk in recruiting, I, I talked about it at my reception of just somebody's happiness. Yeah. And, you know, and so you know when you're happy and you know when that person um, you know, is the right person. It's kind of like making a decision. Yeah. Like you make a decision to choose and like you tell guys, you say, hey man, you'll just know. Yeah. You know, and they'll be like, 17 year old crossing his eyebrows <laughs> at you. And like, you know, when you've been through something once before, um, she was married previously, obviously I was married previously. And so to be able to like, you know, you just know. And, uh, you know, we, we felt great about it. And then to be able to, you know, get that support from Purdue. And so uh, very thankful. Um, I've always kind of half joked and half serious when someone says, you know, whatever, whatever happened if like Purdue said like, you know, you don't want to be their coach anymore. And I, and I'd be like, well, I've, I've been the head coach at Purdue 13 years yeah. longer than I thought I was yeah. going to. <laughs> so like when you when you play for someone like Coach Katie and you grow up in this you grow up in this state and Coach Knights in Indiana, yeah. you think those two guys are going to be the coach there yeah. forever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like so to be able to to have this opportunity, which I'm very grateful for, and um, I think that's something for me to, to be able to continue to get the support. And I love it for our program. Um, I love it to be able to go out there and sell and. And, and show the continuity that we've been able to have because I think we can be like an outlier, yeah. you know, and because it doesn't happen that way. Yeah. It's so competitive and it's hard to keep your job. Um, in a conference like the Big Ten, I've seen a lot of friends not yeah. be able to, you know, to hold on. And I think if more um, administrations, more board of trustees, more people that support, I think we have a very educated fan base. Um, especially in comparison because people are quick to say, okay, I'm going to move yeah. this guy. And now they don't think about, okay, who can we actually get? Like, yeah. you know, are we, you know, so one thing about, you know, paying a little bit extra money to move up in an airplane and you sit up front, yeah. you know, it's almost like people sometimes buy a guy out and get this guy. Then all of a sudden three years later, they look back and say, Hey, that previous guy wasn't too bad. <laughs> and so the change is always really, really difficult at a high, high level. And Purdue is stuck by me and our coaching staff and our program. And, um, you know, I'm very appreciative of that. And it's hard. It, it's hard for an administration yeah. in today's world because, you know, everything's such a microwave society. And the one thing you got to be able to do is you've got to be able to develop. You got to be able to, sometimes you're not going to get somebody that can help you immediately, but they can help you down the road. And that's part of recruiting. That's part of developing. But if you don't have the time to do it and you don't have the support to do it, coaches aren't going to go out and say, Hey, you know, I like you, but I know you're not going to maybe be a starter until your junior yeah. year. Well, I can't take you. I got to take somebody else. And it doesn't work that way. Not every guys are, are ready-made type yeah. guys. So Caleb Swanigan was the best player in the country, and he averaged 10 and 8 his first year. Yeah. I know he skipped a year of high school. Um, Carson Edwards was second team All-American. He averaged 10 points his first year. And so it takes a little bit of time. They were both great freshman year. So when you're looking at all these things and you get these contract extensions or whatever, it really helps because when you talk to parents and you talk to recruits, they're able to see that. They're able to see that continuity. And that's what they want. You know, they want to play for one college coach. These kids today, they, they don't want to play for two people. They, yeah. don't want, they don't want change. But you also, as a coach, is you, you learn to see what kind of works for you. And maybe some kid is not for you and he goes somewhere else and has success. It doesn't mean that, you know, you, know, you made a mistake. It's just you, you got to have a pulse on what works for you and what works at Purdue. Last time for one more question. Anything else you want to? So it's two years in a row you've had a sophomore go from not even being all Big Ten to being an All American. So is it matter no gel this year? Huh? <laughs> Matt, hey, no gel's coming on next. Yeah, no, you can ask no him. I'll get Matt in the locker room. I'll ask him and see what it is. <laughs> hey, if, if one of those guys is an All American in their sophomore year, we're we're going to be cooking with gas. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to be in a good, good spot. So um, it, it's kind of ironic that, you know, we've had two All-Americans yeah. in that sophomore class, and it kind of shows you kind of, you know, what you learn. And uh, both of them are obviously really talented, but both of them are hardworking guys. Mm -hmm. You know, Carson Edwards puts a lot of time on his game. You know, Biggie put a lot of time into his game. People think sometimes it's like, oh, yeah. you know, the Lord touched you and you're 6'10", or the Lord touched you and you're fast and explosive. Those guys put a lot of individual time into their game, you know, improving their skill level, doing little things to help themselves. So, um, you know, we're excited about it. You know, I, I think it's, you're always on proving grounds as a coach, always. And you're always on proving grounds in your program, and so is players. But I, I think we have a lot of guys that are, that are on those proving grounds that haven't yet played for us. And so, you know, we're excited. I'm excited to, we, we need to play some people besides ourselves just because they allow us to use the four hours in the summer, the four hours in the fall. Right. So this isn't like the, you know, the start of practice happened on September you know, 25th, 26th, whatever the day was. Um, you know, it, this has been going on for a while. And so now we need to start 
kind of you know blend in our team and, and, and start to face some other people that do different things so we can see how these guys play and how they react. All right, we could go on all day, we all, but uh, we appreciate your time very much. Purdue, Purdue will open up uh, the 1st of November against the uh, exhibition game against Marion, I believe it is. And then you get into it pretty hot and heavy. Uh, you're going to have some interesting games uh, on the front end uh, uh, of the schedule before you get to Big Ten. Well, Matt, thanks so much for your time, and uh, uh, good luck for the rest of, of uh, preseason practice, and we can't wait uh, for the start of Matt. There's nothing like basketball in Mackey Arena. And, uh, Next time we get him on, we'll, I want to talk to him about this great environment here. It's really something else. So we'll take a two-minute break and bring in No Gel Eastern, who is – somebody said he's going to be an All-American this year. We're going to ask him about that. <laughs> but uh, uh, we know he's going to give it good effort, and we'll look forward to talking to him in two minutes on Golden Black Live.